Hello and welcome to another episode of my Facts and Glitches series, where I showcase some more of what I've learned about GTA 5 in my almost 8,000 hours of speedrunning the game and from my awesome viewers. Recently, a major glitch was rediscovered in GTA 5 speedrunning. The buffered ledge grab was possible to perform on PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, but no one could get it to work on PC. We now know that it was the default controls that prevented this glitch from occurring. Changing your jump and phone special buttons so they are not the same makes it possible again. To activate this glitch, take cover on something you can climb. Then, bring out your phone and press the buttons you use to climb, in my case W and space. This will cause you to be pushed out of cover. You can now move wherever you want, but when you stand still and put down your phone, the game will warp you back in order to complete the climb animation. The limitations and uses of this glitch are somewhat complex. You can, for example, put your phone down and not get warped back as long as you are in cover. But the second you move off cover without your phone up, the glitch will activate. Driving a car disables the glitch, even if you keep your phone up while driving. When you get out and put down your phone, nothing will happen. To fix this, you must take cover when you get out of the car. This, for some reason, makes the glitch work again and you will warp to where you started the glitch as normal. It is also important to note that the warp is tied to the objects, not the location you performed the glitch. This means you can do it on a car, drive the car somewhere else, and you will still reliably warp back to that car. The max distance you can warp is debatable because it depends on FPS, but at the very least, if the object you are attempting to warp to despawns, it will not work. Different settings such as distance scaling will impact how far you can travel without the object despawning. Unfortunately, this glitch cannot normally be carried through cutscenes. The only exceptions are when you end the cutscene in a car or in cover. This is the case on the mission Bury the Hatchet. Michael is in cover after the cutscene, thus moving out of cover activates the glitch previously set up when you arrived. Where are you? <sighs> A much more inconsistent aspect of this glitch can be achieved if you destroy the climbable object just before you warp back to it. Getting a perfect launch in the air might save time in a speed run, but it is so unreliable that it likely will never be attempted in a full run. Although, on individual mission speedruns like the one for the mission complications, you can go for these very risky strategies. So, Mr. Kenneth, were we at uh, financing? The financing, it seems like a shitty deal. Uh, because of the color of my skin. To do this glitch online is more convoluted because your character doesn't physically bring out their phone in the same way you do in single player, it is just an overlay that appears on screen. However, there is a glitch to change this. I first learned of this from Sarah digitally, but it seems common knowledge. In single player, go into creator mode, then select create a capture and GTA. Next, change your camera, there is a 50-50 chance the character you control will be the same sex as your online character. This must be the case for the glitch to work. If they don't match, just retry. Assuming this is the case, move into GTA Online. This will give you the normal single player phone animation and thus you can perform the glitch as normal. 
This glitch is possible on the later consoles, but I don't play them, so I can't explain how to do it, but here is a visual guide made by Dave V. Thank you Findlestick for making us aware of the glitch on the early consoles, thank you to Justice for figuring out how to do it on PC, and thanks Twisted Tamer for spearheading its implementation into the speedruns. It is possible to access Los Santos with Michael before the mission prologue begins. First, while on any save file, load a new game. The timing is tricky for the next part, but a few seconds before you load in, you need to select your online character. I waited until the loading circle had spun 11 times and then began to hold and release F8 in a rhythm. Attempting to do this too early or too late seemed to prevent the glitch. My loading times of course will differ from your own and what key you need to press depends on your version of the game. When you are asked if you want to go online, of course you select no. This will reveal Michael in Los Santos. The map will be almost completely covered and if you save your game, you will have a 0% in the beginning save file. And you can even create an auto save with the same name by going into director mode. Unfortunately, after 5 seconds, prologue starts as normal, even if you load these save files. To be honest, your ease of getting this glitch and how long you will spend in Los Santos will depend on how powerful your system is. My system is very fast, so it makes it very difficult to achieve this glitch. In the elevator of the FIB building, as can be seen on the Firefighter Bureau raid, the floor numbers skip over 13. It is common in some parts of the world to not label any floor 13 due to the belief the number brings about bad luck. This is of course quite silly, as the 13th floor, despite being named the 14th floor, would still actually be the 13th. On the side of every cab there is a sign that claims that taxi drivers carry firearms and will defend themselves. This is of course a lie. Let's go now. Damn. Go to hell. I guess I'm not having a very good day. It is impressive how well characters can push their bikes backwards up steep inclines. On the mission friend request where Michael infiltrates the Life Invader building, there is a small room that very few people would ever go into that actually has an easter egg. I'm totally becoming a tech evangelist when the big boys vest. Maybe not even tech, I'll evangelize anything, even evangelize it. This is the only door that works and there is nothing of interest in here except this box. It has the same language and markings as the vans in GTA 3. Rockstar made a slight error when they programmed Crystal Maze, and this becomes obvious when you park your car to the left of the door where you start the mission. You sure as shit are one dumb ignorant. When the mission starts, it rightly spawns you in the middle of the parking lot, but if you mission fail, it respawns you at the location you left your car when you first arrived at the mission. Some planes have a hitbox to encompass everywhere their propeller can be, while others have a hitbox just where the propeller is. At the altruist camp, it is possible to be able to snipe the members, but to still be far enough away that they instantly respawn. There is likely many instances of this in the game, but this is just an easy one to do.
strangely, if you kill a taxi driver and enter through the passenger side door, rather than hitting out the dead person and taking the driver's seat as normal, your character will sit comfortably next to the body. You are utterly ridiculous. Christ alive! Accessories that color your vision will show this coloring when you move into first person. However, this coloring will dissipate after a short time. When you do the stealth version of the jewel store heist and Franklin has to throw some gas into the vents, if you have grenades, Michael will remark about this and tell you not to use them. We're in position, waiting on your signal. Just gotta get where I can throw this. Hey, I saw you had some grenades on you. Don't throw them instead of the gas bombs. I think I can tell the difference. I got an angle. We're waiting on you. Sit tight. On the mission Fresh Meat, Franklin is meant to use a mobile app to track Michael's phone to find his location. At any point, you are able to switch back to Michael and see how he is going in the factory. Funnily enough, if you pause the game while in control of Michael, it still shows you your character arrow, telling you exactly where Michael is, making the entire use of the app and tracking Michael's phone completely pointless. You can even set a point of interest marker that you can then follow when you switch back to Franklin. On the mission Daddy's Little Girl, Jimmy informs Michael that Tracy is on a boat, causing Michael to dive off the pier and swim over to us. Rockstar didn't seem to believe you would get a wanted level at this point, so intentionally getting one leads to strange results. Once Tracy is underwater, she seems to no longer need oxygen at all. Nothing else interesting happens, if you lose your wanted level, everything respawns and progresses as normal. One small area of the IAA building does not have any collision. This means you can jump through it and parachute into the area that is featured during the Mission 3's company. Moving into first person or ragdolling will make it so the textures are visible. There is not much of interest here, some small objects, many rooms, invisible walls, but nothing useful. You can however see how they prevented the old method of getting in here, which was parachuting through the window. There is now a second panel of indestructible glass to prevent it. There are many cutscenes in the game that people will likely never see because they occur under unusual circumstances. For example, if you fail to leave the jewel store during the heist, you can see the gang get arrested. Time's up! We gotta go! The cops are coming. You've been warned. Get out of there now or you will be arrested and imprisoned. Go! Yeah, 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 I get it. Took too long. Down, down slow. That was out, you know. Got you, motherfuckers. On the mission by the book, if you torture Mr. K for too long, you'll be prompted to use a syringe to bring him back to life. I suspect most people have not seen the cutscene that occurs if you do not do this. Now hold on, hold on, what, what, hold on. Forget it. It's fucking dead. Oh yeah, poor bastard, man. 
You are a fucking moron. Whoa. Hey, I just spent the past few hours torturing a seemingly innocent guy to death, and I don't even know why I did it. So does that make me a fucking moron? You're going down, punk. At the exact moment I get bored with you, your little racket will end. Yeah. Yeah, you love those fucking tough guy lines, don't you, huh? Fuck you. As long as you set your distance scaling setting high enough, did you know there are bouncy balls in this game that people sometimes confuse for gumballs? At this location, there is a rock that if you run into it in first person, you'll be launched into the air. It seems dependent on holding a weapon, with the rifles giving the biggest launch. And so that ends the video. If you have anything that you think would be great for this series, feel free to submit it via my Discord. There is a special section for such submissions. Thank you for watching.